Today we have uh, Lynn Lauder, who is a major U.S. Marine uh, veteran, co-founder, and co-CEO of Veteran Business Project, uh, which is an, an incredible organization I'll be talking about. Uh, we also have Dale Eisenberg, who is the son of a World War II pilot, co-founder, and co-CEO of Veteran Business Project. Uh, we are here to talk about the 2021 vet Veteran Business Project updates and their ongoing agenda in this year coming out of the pandemic and charging forward. They're doing a great job. Hi, Lynn, and hi, Dale. Hi, hi Colonel. How, how are you? Oh, great, great, great. Um, who wants to start off? Do you, uh, Lynn or Dale? If I could, Colonel. Uh, yes. I'd just like to begin, if I could, with a quick overview of who we are at Veteran Business Project, what we do. Yes. In a, in a phrase, our mission is to get veterans and spouses into business for themselves, plain and simple. Uh, during this COVID environment, we have uh, shifted into really helping a lot of businesses survive. Uh, re-imaging, helping them with financing, helping them with uh, dealing with debtors, uh, that kind of thing. Ordinarily, however, all of our effort goes into business matchmaking. We really uh, focus our primary effort since we started eight plus years ago is to match veterans and military spouses looking to get into businesses with existing businesses that are looking to sell. I should tell you, Colonel, that it's very topical right now mm -hmm. because of all of the uh, veteran-owned businesses in America, which, by the way, veterans own about 11% of the total small businesses in America. But of that population, 50% uh, are age 73 and higher with no succession plan. Most of them have no succession plan for their businesses. Mm -hmm. So... On the back side of this COVID, there is a lot of opportunity for veterans out there that, frankly, would not have been there prior to COVID. So that's just a side note. Uh, oh, in in uh, basically wrapping up this little intro statement, some of the services we offer our veterans out there are free business matchmaking. We help them. Uh, people like Dale and myself, we have a number of seasoned business people, many of which are veterans that deal with these prospective veterans and mill spouses on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We help them establish a plan of action. Mm -hmm. We mentor throughout the entire process from due diligence at the beginning all the way through to the buy-sell. We help them uh, locate funding uh, by registering on our website. Veterans have new access to information as it comes into us. Uh, as I said before, the uh, COVID environment uh, makes things seem uh, more uncertain. But uh, I'll tell you, on the back side of this, and we're coming out of it now, there's opportunity. So let me just conclude, Colonel, by saying that our website is yes. veteranbusinessproject.org, and that's all together, www.veteranbusinessproject.org. Our phone number is 833 883-8249. So, uh, and we're really uh, very appreciative, Colonel, of having the opportunity to come on uh, this show, uh, Cliff's show, and, and, and your involvement with it. We are very appreciative of that. Oh, uh, well, you know, Lynn, uh, first of all, it's great to have you on here, and you're doing some wonderful things for um, our veterans uh, who are, you know, always near and dear to my heart. I go to sleep thinking about them. I wake up thinking about them. And while I'm awake, I still think about them during the day. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, you know, what you're Great. doing is fun, wonderful. It's not just helping, you know, an isolated veteran here or there. It's helping entire families. So thank you so much uh, for helping to support our veterans that many times are being forgotten. You betcha. Our pleasure, Colonel. Yes. Um, so, Dale, give us uh, some updates. What's going on with the uh, okay. business world? <laughs> well, uh, the, well, I'm, I'm always happy to give you the updates because they seem to be happening. Uh, more and more good things are happening. Uh, we, uh, I think last time we spoke about a couple uh, disabled female CBs that were down in uh, central Illinois yes. that came to us and were having trouble getting started and finding uh, funding, which is really a, a tough thing, and that's where we're trying to help a lot. Uh, and they are looking to open in the next few weeks. So they are wow. just beside themselves. <laughs> they didn't think this opportunity was going to happen. They had been turned down by banks. 
And so hopefully our next meeting uh, with you will be able to tell and share more about what they're doing. Yes. So that's exciting. And I've gotten, gosh, over the last uh, couple of weeks, it seems like a flurry of, of veterans looking to get into business. Some are real sure about what they want to do. And this is from all, all over the country because we're national in our work and uh, we, we make ourselves available 24 7. And let me point out real quick, too, and Lynn, Lynn's aware of this, is that we're not just a, a, a business uh, matching uh, program. We're, we're happy to help veterans or reservists or anybody in the military that's having any other issues. We have a lot of resources, mm. uh, even if they're just thinking about business. But, you know, we, as Lynn pointed out, we're there to help even if they're struggling. So uh, we're just a multifaceted organization in that respect. So let me, let me jump in real quick, too, because I'm pretty excited. I, I went down to speak in front of uh, some Marine Reserve uh, uh, base down in Joliet, Illinois, this last uh, week. And I wound up explaining what we're doing. And it's a little different for them because a lot of them are working now. They're just uh, working one weekend a month, as you know, and, and a couple weeks in the summer. But I got a, a nice response from a lot of them that said, geez, we've been thinking about going into business. We're working for people that just don't really appreciate us, and they're struggling. And a lot of them are young. So that's, that's really one of our main focuses on the young enlisted. And I've actually taken on three of them full time. I've got three young Marines, and they are excited to be participating in our uh, we're doing a um, apprenticeship to ownership program. And uh, as you know, I've got a few restaurants and I'm putting them in each one. And we're mm-hmm. just kind of finding our way what they want to do, but we're excited to have them in our program. So those are kind of some of the things we're doing right now. And uh, Lynn, do you got anything else I missed? I can keep talking uh, about? <laughs> there. <laughs> That's a mouthful already, but oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I, I tend to go pretty fast, so you can stop me at any time. Don't don't get me excited here. Let me just, Colonel. Let me just put it in good Marine terms that you'll understand really well. Okay. We're, we're we're busier than the old one legged man at a butt kicking. Oh, the, oh yes, I understand that one. <laughs> That's a fact. Uh, I want to say something, too. This is really important. One of the things that we're so proud about uh, is that the military is the example in America for diversity and how people can get along, work together productively, and get things done. We're all on this earth to help each other. That was that's the whole purpose why we're, we all find ourselves here, according to the uh, man upstairs plan. Yes. We show in the military we can do that really, really well. You know, we mix master everybody in boot camp. We make them mutually miserable. They got, <laughs> they got to work, they got, right? They got to work their way through it. And you find out that guys have good hearts no matter where they're from, no matter what their background is. And that's true. Now, I'm saying this because if there's ever been a time uh, in, in, in the history of this country where our military people have proven their mettle, it's happened all through the generations, but we've been at war now, as I know you know, Colonel, almost 20 years now. Yes, yes. And um, we, we've never stretched people like we have in this war. Our active duty military now is 46% minority. Oh, 46%. 46%. Wow. So let me tell you something. People of color, people from different backgrounds, Asian Americans, you name it, and of course the uh, you know the, 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 the uh, small town guys, which is which is where I'm from, have been answering the bell left, right, and center. They deserve the opportunity. If they want to be in business for themselves, they doggone deserve it. Uh, without them standing in the gap, there'd be no America to talk about. We wouldn't even have a Memorial Day. Wow. And veterans not stepped up yeah. time and time again. So it's, you know, business, being in business. Dale has uh, been in business successfully for 45 years. Uh, it ain't for the faint of hearted as they go, but I want the veterans and military spouses that are listening to this to know that they have got everything that everybody has had. You know, the World War II generation and the nine years following World War II, Colonel, we had 49.7% of our veterans in business for themselves. 
Now it's five percent and dropping. Are you kidding? Are, wow, I didn't. Not realize. at all. Not at all. Not at all. And by the way, uh, we're meeting with the SBA. They're very keen on what we're doing. <laughs> what is astonishing about this is that we are the only organization in the country, Colonel, doing it. Now that's a great challenge for us, and we're thankful to God that we're in here doing it. It's frankly shocking that to us that nobody has, has stepped into this breach in the past. But here we are, and we're grateful to be here. But we want to know, we want to get the word out to people out there that there is opportunity out there, and our veterans deserve it. Absolutely. And uh, it's a changing world in many ways and, and changing for the better. So uh, yes, people, yeah. sir, they need to have the opportunity, and it's out there, Colonel, and we wanted to have it. And, you know, also, you know, I had to, I had to uh, mention this because I was thinking about Memorial Day, but we have uh, quite a few veterans that, you know, were injured or wounded in war and, um, you know, have you know, suffered the consequences of that, that them and their families. And so are, are there business opportunities for veterans that have disabilities as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, too, the administrator, new administrator uh, under this current administration is extremely pro-veteran. I mean very much so. This is, this is mm -hmm. tremendous. Yeah. So she is holding uh, study groups now and calling people up. Uh, you know, we're going to be in a conference with her next week. So she's heard about what we're doing. She's concerned. She wants to get involved. We're going to show her how to get involved. Uh, we're actually asking the SBA to help push the word about our program out there far and wide. We're self-funded. Uh, this isn't a call for money either, Colonel. I don't want to give you the wrong impression. We are proudly self-funded. We, we owe no one anything. Uh, we're just in this to get veterans in business for themselves, plain and simple. So, but they could help us get the word out, just like you are. And we want to thank you again, you and Cliff, Glenda, your whole crew, for helping us get the word out. Uh, the opportunities are out there, and we want people to step up and study these saints and see if, and see if they want to jump in business. If they do, we'll help them get there. Oh, fantastic. I, you know, and, and again, you know, it's an honor to do this for you uh, because what you're actually doing is you're helping, you know, many uh, service members, you know, come from, uh, you know, families that have uh, borne, the, you, know, the, you know, the burden of, of battle. And uh, many of them are, uh, even though they're in the service or uh, are veterans now, uh, they have Gold Star memory, you know, their family coming from Gold Star families because they're, uh, brothers, their sisters, their uncles, their, uh, you know, their dads, their moms have, you know, uh, made the ultimate sacrifice as well. So you're actually helping um, those families as well, which we should be honoring every day uh, for their sacrifices uh, for our country. So I am, uh, you know, really um, honored to actually even have you on this show <laughs> and to be a part of this, because what you're doing is changing uh, these families' lives and these veterans' lives. You know, Colonel, by the way, thank you for those kind comments. A guy asked us the other day, he said, what, what got you going for this whole thing? And mm -hmm. we tell people straight up, the very bottom line is this is all about hope. We have people that are taking their lives and uh, veterans. Yes. And yes. It, you well know the last, the last thing that happens before they make that faithful decision is, is no hope. We want people to understand that there's hope out there for them. Here's the other part about it. For us to lift each other up by the bootstraps, people from rural areas, people from inner city areas, people that don't come from money, people that are struggling to make it in this country, the greatest way that we can, or we can promote the intergenerational, the transfer of wealth from one generation to the next to the next is through business ownership, Colonel. Mm -hmm. That's how we do it. So we build a business, and then we can hand it off to our children, our grandchildren, and so forth. That's, that's how the people in Wall Street have been doing it for a very long time. I'm a slow learner, but once I get my nose on the set, you know, I, I, I can zero in. And that's what I've learned in these last several years in studying all of it. It's why it's so powerful. We need people that come from backgrounds that you and I and others have come from 
to to become people of influence. That way, when we call those folks in D.C., you know, we get ready to go to war or whatever we do. I always tell people, well, if Mrs. Rockefeller or Mrs. Kennedy calls out there, well, they'll take that call. But if my mom would have called, nah, I doubt it. So we need people of influence weighing in and holding these politicians accountable. The one thing I've learned, Colonel, that matters in Washington, D.C., is Mm -hmm. money. Plain and simple. Money. Uh, I've gone to school, and I've seen it, and I know it. So we want our veterans to become prosperous, to be able to live a good life. They richly deserve it. So at any rate. Thanks for listening to me. Oh, no, this that's is, uh, uh, fantastic. <laughs> uh, I love it. Uh, you know, the intergenerational wealth you were talking about is so important because that strengthens yep. our national security in and of itself because those families are the ones who, you know, have a tendency to volunteer, you know, to go into service for the country to protect it. And uh, so building those families, we need to be rebuilding that um that commitment to excellence in our communities, you know, um, and having the right orientation about this country and the things that we hold near and dear as a constitutional principles to, to make sure that we're building a stronger and stronger America. And so what you're doing is actually on the foundation, building those kinds of opportunities for our veterans to participate in the business community, and that f- further strengthens our country and our you know, our, our perspectives on what it means to be uh, an American and do the right thing. Outstanding. Love what you're saying, Colonel. Comes from the heart. We're right there with you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so why don't you give that, uh, where people can go again, that number and the website? <laughs> sure. Happy to. And thank you. Our website is www. Veteran Business Project, that's all together, www.veteranbusinessproject.org. And then our phone number is 833 883 8249. 883, I'm sorry, 833 883 8249. Okay. Fantastic. I'm going to jump in there because I'm not, I gave you the wrong number. I, I, it's, oh. Did you say 800 383 5150? No, I did not. I think I gave Lynn the wrong number. Okay, I'm going to say it then. You ready again? <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> it's 800-383-5150. I changed it and didn't tell Lynn. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's the last yeah. to know. The yeah. first to go. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> well, that's, that's fantastic, though. I'm glad you cleared it up. But that what the website, actually, I went to visit your website I was blown over by it. It is a phenomenal website. Um, and we actually have to do lunch or dinner together. We've been talking about that. Um, and I guess I can, if I call that number, the 800-383-5150, I can get a message to you so we can uh, connect yep. at some point. Yeah, great. Yeah, our, our personal emails are there, too. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. And, and and Glenda's got our personal uh, numbers too, Carl. Okay, great, great, great. I'll get that from her. We, yes, we'd love we'd love to get a hold of you and uh, or sit down and talk. That would be great. Uh, yeah. Do we have time for a couple of parting comments? Oh all? yes, go ahead. Let's go ahead. <laughs> well, uh, I just want to say this too. There's there's so much opportunity here in this country. We're going through a time and place where there's a lot of anger. Yes. Uh, people in, in D.C. seem to be deadlocked on, on what to do, what not to do, you know. The, the, the thing that we know in the military is we got to work together. Positive bills and negative pills. And so long mm-hmm. as we're not talking to each other and getting along, that, that's not the way we're going to lift this country up and make it better. That's right. So this is really about what we're at. We're, you know... We're also at a time and place where people are afraid to speak really what's in their heart. Well, you know, by age 75, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I've been banged around a little bit. I learned a thing or two. <laughs> and I tell people that everybody, in my view, uh, I know you feel this way, Carol, needs a code of life to live by. Yes. And the, I've never heard it better than the golden rule. You know, do unto others as you'd like to be, have them do unto you. And the guy that wrote that had nine more. Uh, it's it's the if we follow that, 
if we follow that and treat treat each other with love and respect and try to help each other get along in this world, there isn't anything that this country and our people cannot solve. There isn't yes. anything we can. We well, got people out there that want to divide us. They got people out there that want to sow hate. 